Hello everyone. So I welcome you to the lecture series on quantum computing. And this is the lecture number two of this series. And today our topic is charge during thesis. So let's start today's class. So what is charge during thesis? First, let try to understand this thing that what this thesis states. Well, charge during thesis states that a computational function can be solved using any computational device if and only if it is computable by a simple machine known as Turing machine. So I am repeating again. Any computational function can be solved using any computational device in the condition that if it is computable by, by the Turing machine. And this Turing machine is actually proposed by Alan Turing. So this is what Charles Turing's thesis states. So charge Turing thesis states that a computational function is solvable using any computational device, if and only if it is computable by a Turing machine. Well, then let's try to understand it again. Uh, in 1936, Alan Joseph created the method for defining functions called lambda calculus. And within lambda calculus, he defined an encoding of the natural numbers and these natural numbers he called as charge numerals. Then in this 1936 itself, before learning of charge work, Alan Turing, he created a theoretical model for machines and called it as Turing machines. And that could carry out calculation from inputs by manipulating symbols on a tape. So two things you got in 1936, Alonjo Search created a method for defining functions called lambda calculus. And in lambda calculus, he defined encoding of the natural numbers and those numbers known as charge numerals. And in that 1936 itself, Alan Turing created a theoretical model for machines, which he called Turing machines that could carry out calculation from inputs by manipulating the symbols on a tab. Okay, so in the, the in this figure, you can see that he is Alan Joseph and he is Alan, our Alan Turing. So basically, I know that you now got it. What is turning Turing thesis and what is Alan Turing? Okay, let's try to know about them more. So now come to the Turing machine. So Alan Turing has created this Turing machine model. This is a theoretical model, of course. And this model has computing of general purpose computer. Now, mathematically, if you see this, then this can be defined as M is equal to this set. Here, you will find seven tuples. Q is summation symbol and this finite set of external symbols and this transition function and this q naught and then this blank and this final set okay you got it one two three four five six seven so seven tuples define this turing machine where q q is a finite set of states you know uh, state Suppose you are currently, uh, your machine is in state S1, providing some input. Okay, you have to obviously provide input or input will be read and then the state may be changed to S2. So this Q is a finite state of state and this second symbol, this is the finite state of external symbols. Okay, external symbols set. And then the summation 
sign. This is representing a finite set of input symbols. I'm talking about this input. So this set consisting of this input symbols is denoted by this symbol, right? And then this B is for blank. And this B actually majorly used as a and markup for input. Blank, you know? Okay, so this is the end marker for input and this lambda is a transition or mapping function and this f is, sorry, f, this f is consisting of final stage. So this is the Turing machine, do remember it. And now I hope each term of this Turing machine, you got it what are they? So then charge Turing machines, once again, if we try to understand this, in its uh, statements, you'll find that this thesis concerns an affective or mechanical method in logic and mathematics. A method M is called affective or mechanical just in case if F M is set out in terms of a finite number of exact instructions, and this is instruction being expressed, expressed by means of a finite number of symbols. The first case is that M will be called affective. M is what? M is the method that Sars Turing thesis tries to define as an affective method only when M is set out in terms of a finite number of exact instruction and being expressed by a finite number of symbols. So M number of suppose symbols are there to represent that say N2 number of exact instructions. So that is finite. Then M will, if carried out without error, always produce the desired result in a finite number of states. So what it tries to mean is that within finite number of states, if M is run without error, that it will produce our desired result. Okay, so got it? So this search during thesis tries to define such type of effective method. I hope this is clear to you. Now, if we try to classify this search during thesis, then we can classify it into two. First one is normal charge during thesis. That is the normal charge during thesis that we have discussed. And the second one is the strong charge during thesis. Now, this classical strong charge during thesis, let's try to know it about it in details. So this thesis says that a probabilistic Turing machine can efficiently simulate any realistic model of, a, of any computation. Repeating it again, a, this strong charge Turing thesis states that a probabilistic Turing machine can efficiently simulate any type of realistic model of computation. Now this classical strong search theories during thesis has a disadvantage. And what is that? It because it is not so efficient to simulate any quantum device. This is the disadvantage of it. So to deal with this disadvantage, we need a quantum version of it. So quantum version of this thesis has been introduced where the probabilistic Turing machine will be replaced by quantum Turing machine. Now you got it how it becomes two. See, first you have classical one, normal charge Turing thesis, second one, the strong charge Turing thesis. Classical one has one disadvantage that it is not so efficient Right, it is not so efficient to simulate any quantum device because it has a probabilistic Turing machine. So if we replace this probabilistic Turing machine with a quantum Turing machine, then this at this advantage may be removed, right? So while doing that, we come to this strong one that is what I can say. Uh, a quantum version of this Turing 
machine. Okay, so quantum version of the stressing uh, thesis has been introduced where the probabilistic Turing machine can be replaced by quantum Turing machine. Okay, so this is clear. So let's come to the definition part of this quantum uh, Turing machine. So quantum Turing machine also known as universal quantum computer, right? And this is an abstract machine model used to capture all of the power of quantum computation. Now, what does it mean? It means that any computational function which can be solved using any computational model if and only if it is computable by a quantum Turing machine. So if there is a quantum Turing machine which can compute this type of uh, mo computational model, okay, then we can say that that computable function or that function is computable, right? Now, a quantum algorithm can be expressed formally as a particular quantum Turing machine. Now you have got it. And these Turing machines were first proposed by one physicist from Oxford University named as David Deutsch. Okay, and he suggested quantum gauge could function in the similar way or in similar fashion to traditional digital computation thing binary logic gates. Since we are actually going to deal with quantum uh, Turing machine or everything, the concepts in quantum computations, we try to deal with some similar type of gate that we have already started in case of binary logic gates. Okay, don't worry, we'll discuss about those quantum gates in some future classes. Now, that's all about quantum Turing machine and charge Turing thesis. Do remember this charge Turing thesis is very important. I'm recapping it again. So this charge Turing thesis, you got it that it states that a computational function can be solved using any computational device, even only if it is compatible by a simple machine known as Turing machine. And what is Turing machine? You got it. That is a seven tupled machine, right? And what are those seven tuples we have already discussed? Then we got it that uh, quantum Turing thesis tries to define and method M as an effective one if it uh, tries to set out or tries to uh, solve a problem in finite number of steps. Okay, in finite number of steps. So, so it contains actually exactly a finite number of instructions. And if it is run without error, it will always going to produce you the desired result in a finite number of steps. See, I'm focusing on the term finite. Then you got it, the, the classification of charge Turing thesis as normal charge Turing thesis and strong charge Turing thesis. In the classical one, you need, see that we are using probabilistic Turing machine, right? So probability steering machine, uh, it has one disadvantage that it is not efficient to simulate any quantum device. So we go for what? Then we go for the strong one. That is the quantum version of this thesis where we replace this uh, probabilistic Turing machine with what? A quantum Turing machine. Also, we have defined what is quantum Turing machine that can be considered as a abstract machine model, which is a qu universal quantum computer. Okay, then now before ending this lecture, I again would like to ask you two questions, which you will answer to comment. The first question for today's lecture is, what do you mean by charge Turing thesis? And the next question is that, how many tuples are in Turing machine, seven or eight? So you need to comment the answer. So with this, Dr. Deepo is going to sign out for today's lecture. We'll meet in the next lecture. Till then, take care and bye-bye.